Okay, so we're just getting started. Uh, today, we'll go ahead and start now. Uh, the internet sometimes might go in and out, so just uh, wave your hands or something if the internet kind of slows down a little bit, and then I can re uh, restate what I said, or just uh, put it in the chat to, that, that's going kind of crazy. But we'll go ahead and start. And so, um, has anybody went fishing yet since they've started? Anybody been out fishing? Nope, a couple of you, okay. I've been out a couple times just to take some video and stuff, so it's been been pretty fun. It's pretty good fishing. So uh, today, um, let's see. Let me put the Utah 4H. I put the Instagram thing in the uh, in the chat room there, and that's uh, we're putting a lot of different tips on there. So if you go on that. Every day, they'll probably, I'm going to try to get a, another tip out um, of what we've been talking about. And today, um, we are going to talk about knots. Who likes to tie knots? Probably not a uh, couple, a little bit. Okay. We're going to try to tell you all the knots that you need to know a little bit um, about um, both in dry fly fishing and in nymph fishing. And we're going to teach you, I've got some videos. Let me see where those videos are. Let me put this over here. Okay, we'll put that over there. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna start out on, um, just watch a little video. Let's see, let me look at this one. Uh, yeah, let's look at this. This one, the, the very first knot. So you have your fly line, and I've got my reel right here, and I've got the fly line. So that comes out um, to there. So that's this is called the nail knot. We're not going to worry about the nail knot right now. Um, we're going to go right to what's called the uh, loop to loop knot. And we'll watch it. Let me see if I, I'm going to share a screen here. Let's see. That's probably this one. Okay, so we're going to watch this just a little bit. Let me put that open. Full screen. Let's watch this a little bit. This is called the, the loop knot. If you can see me over in the small one, uh, this is your uh, fly line, and then it goes through a little bit, and there's a loop. Let me pull this one off real quick. So this is so you don't keep you don't have to keep cutting your line. So this is your fly line. You never you only tie this knot once, and it stays good. And if you break it off or something, but it usually doesn't break. So you don't always have to keep cutting your line off because you want your line to be the same. And then this, uh, at the end of this, is called the, the uh, perfection loop. And let's watch that. And then uh, let's watch that. And we'll use we'll the fishing, that. which is why it's also known as the angler's loop. To tie this knot, just put a loop in your line with the running end going under the standing part here. And then just loop your working end around again. So you have a loop on top Can of the first loop that? and run it underneath yeah. again as well. Just pinch that into position. Open up these two loops a little bit. Grab your working end, lay it in between those two loops and then just reach up through the bottom loop, grab the top loop and pull tight. And there you should have Okay, let's see. Let me get out of that thing. Okay, did you guys, uh, that, uh, I'll be doing a uh, kind of a knot on the Instagram that shows that. And so what that does, see now you got, and you kind of see, I wonder if I can, so there's a loop here, you can probably kind of see it a little bit. And then there's loop here. So this is your fly line and this goes down and this is your leader. And so you have a loop to loop, and when you buy, when you buy a leader, this is just one. It has uh, numbers, different things. It, it says the length, and then the size or the the diameter of it, so how heavy it is. And so it, it'll come with the loop on it already, like this. If you can kind of see that right on my chin, this one's kind of red, so it kind of blends in. So I'm trying to. There we go. So what happens is now, and I'll show you another video. You just take these two, 
uh, put one over and I'll show you the other video. Sometimes it takes a little bit of, you just pull all that through and that makes uh, your line connect just like that. And I'll show you, let's look at this other video here. And I'll share my screen again. Okay. And let's watch this a little bit better. Uh, or attach loop to loop leaders and fly lines. Go over the end of the fly line with the loop on your leader. Go through the loop itself with your tippet or some part of your leader. Pull the leader all the way through. I'm gonna go through that loop with the knot of your tippet. Then we're gonna start cinching down. When we cinch down from this point, we wanna be sure that our loop does not turn out looking like this. That will cut itself. That will cause the monofilament in your the butt of your leader to cut itself. You want it to go together as such. Okay, let's see. Stop the sharing here. Okay, so that's a, uh, let's see, where's that? Oh. That one come up kind of funny. Um, so that's how you tie your, your leader on, so you don't really have to tie a knot right there. If you can do that perfection loop, then you can just pop it on there and then you can change leaders as you go. But uh, it's just an easy way to, to put any uh, leader on. Any questions so far? I think everybody, everybody's still with me. Can you guys see those? Uh, can you guys see that all right when we put them up? Okay. Okay, so that's, the, so that's, so so far we've come from the line. So this is the, the reel. So we've come from the, the fly line. Uh, to the nail knot, and that's uh, I'm going to show you on that on the Instagram down the road. But that's the loop to loop to the leader. And now, the one thing that you there's another knot. Let's go with another knot. Or and we're talking about knots today a little bit. Um, so you guys are going to learn these knots just by looking at them once, right? Well, maybe not. <laughs> um, these knots you you sit down and uh, at a movie at home or something and get a lot of line. Um, a lot of times. I will get, uh, maybe this yellow one will uh, pull out a little bit better. So I get uh, some paracord, just some real paracord, and then you just sit there and practice it. So this is the, so right there. So I just tied um, the perfection. See how fast that was? You wanna be able to tie those pretty fast and just kind of make a game of it, see how fast you can do it. Uh, if you guys uh, did Rubik's Cube, they can do a Rubik's Cube in like, I don't know, what's the, like five seconds or nine seconds um, for speed. You can do that with these too. So that's, um, let me show you how I did that real quick. But that's, um, and I'll do it a little bit different on the, a little bit better on the Instagram. But you make a, a loop and another loop. So it kind of looks like uh, a butterfly, the wings, uh, the wings here and here so there's two wings and you put this rope right in between it so that's kind of like the body and then you go up through it's a little hard to see right here but then it makes a, a loop to loop and then you just cut that off so that's um so we've got that part and you can use either um let's see we've got some red so just uh, uh somewhere around your house you probably have some paracord or some light rope and then you can just practice on so let's go on. So we've got the line, the, the fly line, the loop to loop. And now we're gonna learn about the blood knot. The blood knot is how you make the leader. Remember last time I talked about how to, you can make a, lead, a dry fly leader just by buying um, a bunch of different uh, diameter size line. Instead of buying one of these, I think these are about, uh, could be anywhere from $4.95 to $7 a piece, but you can buy, all of the ones that you need for about $15 and go ahead and make, and you could probably make a hundred of them from these because you only used about 20 inches 
of each one and so you, it goes for a long time so that's really kind of the way to do it well, i've got a thing right there and so the blood knot is when you make the leader so when you're making the leader you put a, a loop on the end and then about 20 inches in that book that i sent you and then i will go like this let's see okay let me share my screen here Okay. Another knot is closely linked to fly fishing as the blood knot. Although not especially fast or easy to tie, few knots rival it in terms of strength, smoothness of shape, and versatility. The blood knot is probably best known for joining monofilament segments of varying lengths, diameters, and breaking strengths to produce tapered leaders that turn over easily, allow a fly to gently land on the water surface, and help to produce a drag-free drift. The blood knot's smooth, elongated shape enables it to slip easily. Can you guys see that all right? We're not seeing your video, we're just seeing the audio. Right oh, here. Okay. Let's try that again, let's see. Might be. Now yeah, let's make sure we see that. Okay, one more thing, let me try. Just top one. Anything, uh, do you see that thing yet or no, or just us? I just see our uh, Oh, okay. I think I got it figured out now. Okay, share. How about now? Can you see that? Okay, let me make that big and then I'll start that over a little bit. Although not okay. especially fast or easy to tie, few knots rival it in terms of strength, smoothness of shape, and versatility. The blood knot is probably best known for joining monofilament segments of varying lengths, diameters, and breaking strengths to produce tapered leaders that turn over easily, allow a fly to gently land on the water surface, and help to produce a drag-free drift. The blood knot's smooth, elongated shape enables it to slip easily through rod guides and keeps it from picking up slime or debris in the water. To tie a blood knot, overlap four to six inches of the two line segments being joined. I generally like to start with the lighter weight segment in my right hand and the heavier in my left. Place the right over top of the left. Begin wrapping so when the tag end of the lighter material is pointed up, it's being wrapped toward you. Take four wraps in this manner. More about the number of wraps later. After the fourth wrap, bring the tag down and then come up between the two line segments where they intersect. Leave about two inches of tag extending beyond the intersection. With the thumb and index finger of your left hand, pinch that intersection point to hold it tight and keep it open. Now take the tag end of the heavier material and start making wraps in the opposite direction. In other words, when the tag is pointed up, you're pushing it away from you to take wraps. Once again, make four complete wraps with the tag. Then run the tag end through the open hole at the intersection in the opposite direction as the first tag. While making sure the tags don't pull out, begin to gently draw the knot closed. When using mono, this is where you need to lubricate the knot. Most people use saliva. Continue to draw the knot closed until it forms a nice symmetrical barrel shape, like so. When correctly tied, the wraps on both sides of the knot should be fairly even and running in the same diagonal direction. The tag ends should protrude in a gentle S shape. Up close, it really is a very pretty knot if there is such a thing. I'm going to once again tie a blood knot, but this time using two different colored pieces of 12 pound mono. With four to six inch long tags, place the right over top of the left and take wraps so as the tag comes over the top, it's coming toward you. I'll take five wraps, which is pretty standard for most blood knots. Pass the tag between the two lines that form the intersection 
and then pinch that intersection to keep it open. Get hold of the heavier tag and take five wraps in the opposite direction. So as it goes over top, it's being wrapped away from you. After five wraps, feed the tag through the open intersection in the opposite direction as the first tag. Get the knot aligned, making sure the tags don't pull out of the intersection. And then gently draw the knot down a little bit, so it looks something like this. You can actually see the beginnings of the even angled wraps and the gentle S of the tags before the knot has been closed. Lubricate the knot with saliva. Lip balm also works well. Then rapidly pull in opposite directions on the standing line to firmly close and seat the knot. If done correctly, it should look something like this. One of the wonderful things about the blood knot is the tags can be snipped off really close, so there's basically nothing protruding from the knot. Here, I'm going to... Okay. Let's see where I go. Okay, so that's, um, that one you don't really tie out on the water. Um, that one is usually tied uh, like at home when you're making the leader. So you're not worried about doing all that fancy knot out on the water or while you're fishing. You may, you know, when you're camping or in the uh, trailer or, or something like that, you're, you have to make new leaders you can. Uh, but you usually make uh, that when you're at home, not in the water. Well, I'll show you another easy one. Kind of does the same thing, but it, it takes about two seconds and anybody can do it. So, so far we've got, um, so far we've got the fly line the nail knot, and I'm gonna do each of these knots on the um, on the Instagram that we come in. And the Instagram is on there, uh, Utah 4-H Shooting Sports USU. And so I've been taking each segment, so I'll do, a, I'll do an Instagram post on just the nail knot. I'll do an Instagram post on the perfection loop and how to loop it uh, for the leader. Uh, the bloodline uh, also, uh, the blood knot. And so the other, um, the one, so you have uh, down, so we have, so far we're doing a dry fly leader. So we've got that, we've got the leader coming up, we've got the blood knots sections. And on the very end, so at the end, when we're fishing, uh, we either uh, break off a fly on the tree or a fish, or it kind of gets ruined. The flies sometimes get ruined when the fish teeth hit it. Um, you should check your fly line. If you catch a fish and the, uh, the fish nicks the line with his teeth, the next fish you catch may break right off because it's weakened. So sometimes after a couple, it depends on how big the fish, um, just kind of check your line. You might retie it so you don't lose a big fish maybe on the next cast. And so this, the, so this will get shortened. So you'll, you'll break off, you'll cut off, you'll change flies. So eventually your leader will get shorter. And so what happens is you need to add more to it. And we talked about uh, having the, the tippet. And this is where the tippet comes in, either 2X, uh, 3x or 4x or, or stuff like that and you want to be able to add to your leader and so this is how uh, to add to your leader is really easy so here's a couple and I think I have I have one more video that talks about the surgeon's knot and it's really easy so let's look at this real quick let me see if I can do this again share yeah I think you can see it now I think I've got it figured out <laughs> Okay, so this is the, the so this is adding your uh, so if your tippet gets short, that last section of your leader that you've made. So usually it starts out about I think about 12, 18 to 24 inches. If it gets way down and you get close to this knot, um, you know you got this knot coming up, the the blood knot, and this is your your tippet goes out to your fly, and this gets really short. You don't want a real short section uh, to this knot because it won't land very good. So you add more of this. So this is what we're going to talk. This is how it's going to add to that this knot right here an easy knot to connect tippet to your leader start with your tippet parallel to your leader make a loop with the two pieces and hold the loop open with your bottom fingers then proceed to wrap the end where the tippet is longer around the top of the loop do this three times then pull some of the slack
Wet the knot with saliva and pull tight. Then snip the tag ends and the knot is done. Hey, thanks for watching. Okay, so that was, so that's just a, an easy way. So it's basically, you take two, you cross them over a little bit, and it's two overhand knots. And he did three. I usually just do two. So there's an overhand knot. So just like you're tying your shoe, and then you go back through the same exact thing. Overhand knot, bring the tippet through. This is your leader, or this is your leader, and this is your tippet. And then you just bring that back through, and that's all it is. And what you can do, um, we talked about, uh, so on, on a, so now you have a, a, a long tippet now, so you can add your fly to it and you can, uh, you can head back to fishing. On this one, now check this out. So what I usually do on when I'm nymph fishing, uh, when I put some weight on, I'll take this and then I'll cut, I'll say I'll cut one of them off right there. And so I leave that on and then I clamp um, the other, the, the, the weights right here. So you have the little weights in different sizes. I clamp this here, so if it does get in between some rocks, it just pulls right off. Instead of, if you put the weights above your knot here, uh, one and two, you know, depending on how big they are, if you uh, get in between a rock, say if it gets in between two rocks or something and pulls, then you have to break it and it'll break all your fly. Your, you know, you might have two flies on, then there goes two flies. So that is a way to keep uh, the fly. So you'd rather lose split shot than your dollar twenty-five fly or your, your you know, two fifty. dollars If you're in, if you're in Yellowstone, they're, you know, they're $5 a piece, which maybe not that much, but <laughs> they're a little bit. Uh, so that's a way to do that on that. Um, any questions about that one? So that's just to add, you could actually make a leader out of this, but it just doesn't, uh, it's not as uh, smooth as the blood knot. So it's about, it's similar, but it's not as smooth. So, it, you know, it, it, if you got it in your guides or something, it would kind of catch, catch things. So that's where the blood knot comes in handy making the leaders. But this one you can put on the very bottom one on your tippet. Any questions on those? So we can go back over. So we've got our fly line. I'll just re recap. We've got the nail knot. Um, we've got the loop to loop. And then the leader is made up of a lot of blood knots uh, all the way down. This one is actually a, a tapered leader. So it doesn't have any blood knots in it. But it's used for uh, nymphing. I use this for nymphing and the blood knot ones I use for the dry fly just because it, it, it flows, it lays out really good, and you actually can almost cast it with your hand just without even a rod. And so and then this one is your uh, leader, your surgeon's knot, down to your tippet, and then you can add tippet like that. And then uh, if you, so if you're dry fly, you would cut this one off. So this would be with nymphing. You just leave that on with dry fly. You just cut that off, and then, and then you'd put your fly on the end. So any questions on that so far? Any questions that you have? And the, uh, you said you put the, uh, the sinker, the sinkers on the tippet side of the line. Um, whatever one you cut off. So it doesn't matter. You, there's two of them. You can cut just, it doesn't matter which one. So just put it on the one you don't cut. But so you put it on the, on the tippet side so that if you get, it gets caught, then it doesn't pull your, your fly off. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, um, let me do this real quick. I'll get some, so these are the, you can, uh, let me put it up here. So these are the, the little weights, just the little tiny weights that you put on. And so wh where you'd put that weight would be, so here's our, so the yellow part is the leader, and this is the tippet going down, or the tippet to your fly. Uh, your and if you put weights on, usually nymphing, and so these weights would actually go right on this yellow one that's just the tag end. So you just clamp those around uh, on the on the right there. You can't see them real good. I wish I had pretend my finger is a, a weight. You just put it right here and another weight. So there's two there's two weights. And so if this gets in a rock, they just slip right off, and you get your flies back. And then you reel it in, put another weight, put another weight, and you're good to go. So you clamp them down pretty hard, 
Um, because a lot of times when you're casting, sometimes they will slip off because you cast. But if you clamp them down with your uh, hemostats or your clamp or your scissors, they stay on pretty good. But you just check them every once in a while. Sometimes I'll be fishing for 10 minutes and don't have any weight on. I just you just have to kind of watch that. And so that that's what gets that down on the bottom um, and apply. And you can also um, if this is a little bit longer, say about a foot, you can actually well about a half the length of this, you can actually put another fly right there if you don't have like a for a a swinging uh, a wet fly because a lot of the wet flies don't need a lot of weight they just kind of swing in the kind of on top so that's another thing you can do you can make this a little longer put one fly here and then one fly out here so you can fish with two flies and and no weights and it just kind of swings around it depends the question is have you caught two fish at the same time doing that yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was guiding in montana and the one of the older uh, just a lady come with her husband and she's going to fish. She says, I don't care if I catch any fish, you know, worry about him or worry about him because that's what he wants. And I said, I'll guarantee you fish uh, on this trip. And she's like, well, you know, you don't need to do that. And we put her in a, a run, put two flies on, and her first, you know, five minutes into it, she brings two fish in. Of course, if you catch two big fish, they're going to go opposite ways and break off. But these were, I think they're about, oh, they're probably like eight to 10 inches, both of them. And they didn't pull hard enough. And apparently the, the string was, or the tip, it was strong enough to hold them. And I netted them both. I said, there you go. <laughs> and then, then we ended up catching a lot more fish with her. So she's pretty That's happy. About that. <laughs> that, and that was nymphing, you know, um, dry fly. I've done it where two dry flies and two fish come up and look at them at the same time, but not, uh, I don't, maybe two hoppers or something like that where they're kind of going after or salmon flies when they're just kind of gorging themselves. But but it it happens so <laughs> and so let's see any other questions on that so we've come let me i like to recap just to kind of show you and these are all um and uh we talked about the instagram i'm going to actually do one of these knots on each of the instagram just like the video did and so you'll get that on instagram and you'll have them there say if you're out on the water not on the water but out camping and you can get your cell service or whatever, or your Instagram, you can check it out and we'll, we'll have those. So those are coming up. So just watch all those. So let's see. So we got the, the nail knot, the loop to loop, um, the blood knots, and then the surgeon's knot, which you're is to add the tip. What's that? You were just frozen for a minute. Oh, okay. So yeah, just going down the knots again. I have a question. Okay. Uh, what knot would you recommend for beginners? Um, that surgeon's knot, that last one we watched, that's a really good one to add, add tippet. So, and normally, you know, if you're, if you're fishing along and you don't break off a lot of flies, um, you don't really have to tie too many knots. Your, your main knot is going to be the knot that we, that we talk about next is your, is your, uh, knot that ties the fly on. That's the main one. Cause you'll tie that a lot, a lot. You want to be so good at that, you almost can do it in your sleep, you know, if you can get it through that little eye. <laughs> but uh, that's the main one. Every, uh, every other knot up above the fly is usually done at home and preparing to fish. And so you really don't have, you know, you still have to learn them and know them, but you don't have to do it. Like when you go fishing, if you're fishing right and, you know, breaking off and catching fish, you're, you're going to tie that fly on and changing flies. You're probably going to tie that knot 20 times or 30. Or 40 you know depending on what you do if you have the right fly on and you're catching fish just keep that one on and so and that's that's the case on there and so the main main fly who what knots do you know that uh, go to your fly so there's the the cinch knot um, there's a couple of, a lot of different ones this is a, a really easy one so I'm gonna I'm gonna use this big rope this is not a fly it's kind of a keychain spur but it acts like it's gonna act like the eye of the fly I don't know you probably catch a fish on that maybe a a cowboy fish maybe I don't know so but what happened so I'm just gonna go so basically the hardest part of any tying any fly on is getting it through that little hole right and a lot of times when you get flies or tie flies and you put a little glue on it on the eye of the hook or on the eye of the hook sometimes you fill in that hole and so you're like man I can't for the life of me get get that line through that hole because there's not one okay so what you do is you get uh, 
I'll just kind of exaggerate it here a little bit. If I can find, there's one. So if you can't, um, a lot of times uh, when you buy flies, they'll have a little bit of glue in that eye so there's not even a hole to get through. So you're, you're spending half an hour, you know, trying to get your line through the eye and it's not going. So what you can do is you get another, a bigger hook that you have. And this is kind of, this is not the small one, but you take your point of the hook and put it in the, the eye of the other one to make a hole and kind of make, push it around and make that hole. And then you can put that big fly in and then, hey, look at there, you can go through there. So if you, you know, that's, that's what happens because uh, these, us older guys could probably relate. We can't tell if that hole is open or not sometimes. The like little kids, maybe they can see right through that or something, but, um, but it's just hard. So on this one, and what, this is probably the hard one. There's a, um, a couple of ways that we do it. So we put it through the eye. And this is called the cinch knot. You just go around. So you hold the leader or the tip of your hand and you just put this around three or four times. And the tag end goes right through the hole that you made. Let me put it right there. Yeah, you put, there's a little loop right there. The tag end goes right through there. That's called the cinch knot. And I'll do that. So that's just a cinch knot, but that sometimes slips out because when you pull it, this end comes out and it comes out. And so what you want to do is you want to do what's called, and you can look it up on, on, on line two, just like I did, um, and just practice it. But you get, um, this is called the improved cinch knot. So you go through, you go, so you have it twisted around the eye of the hook and you see that little loop right there. You put it through that one and then see that other loop that you made right here. You put it back through that one. So it's actually doubling back. Then you tighten that a little bit. And then it cinches down and it won't, won't come apart. So that's kind of what it looks like. But I'll show you a cool way to, to tie it that's even easier than that, okay? So that's a, there's a lot of different ones that you can do, but this one's really cool. So you grab the leader or the tippet, you grab this line right here. So you're just grabbing, so here's the fly. Here's the uh, tippet coming down. You go through the eye and have the tag end up here. And so what you do is you grab the fly, put your finger right in the side right there, and then just start twisting just with your finger, just like this. And guess what it does? It makes those loops for you. And so what you do is you, um, so you got that, you put your fingers through here, you just grab it like this and go through that first. So exactly the same, you just grab it like this, pull it through and you made this other hole and you grab it through and and pull on that. So you made the cinch knot with a lot easier without kind of twisting it funny. So let me do that again. And like I say, you have to practice it. And I'll have probably on this one on one of my next uh, Instagrams. So it'll be really, I'll put it on a better, you can't really see it right here, but you just hold it on the, so here's the tippet coming in. You go through the eye of the, the fly, you hold it up, you put your finger, your, your just your regular finger, you can do it on a really small fly. Just put your finger just like that and then just start spinning so the fly stays, oops. So the fly stays down in that bottom loop right there, but you just, you just made a bunch of uh, twists without even hardly, you know, trying a little bit. So then you get your finger, uh, you put your finger a little clamp right there, you put that tag end in, pull it through, then you put your fingers through here, and then you pull that what well, you just went through the other hook and just like that, and then it'll uh, slide right down on there. This doesn't slide very good because it's paracord, but man, you got a good knot right there. And then you just cut that off. So, the, and the main thing on tying knots is muscle memory. And so like the first, at first you'll do it and you won't know where this finger goes or this finger goes. You're like, what the heck? You know, it's kind of hard, but as you do it, you kind of get a, a system down and then it'll be really fast. And so it, it takes uh, just a little practice to, to get that. This is a good knot because it doesn't come undone. <laughs> Any questions on that one? But I'll put that on one of my next. Um, but it's basically a cinch knot and it's a great knot, but it's just a faster way to, to tie it. So I'll, I'll do it one more time, just real kind of in uh, regular speed. Oops, that just turns around. Turns around so I can do it really fast after you get your muscle memory just like that. So I just tied it just like that. So it's like four or five seconds, you can tie one on there and then you're ready to fish again.
So that uh, is really helpful. Let me see this. Whoops. If you like this sort Whoops. of. Let me. Let me see which other one. Okay, and so that's the end fly, um, and that's the one you need to to practice the most. And I'll do a kind of a, a Instagram page on that, so you can refer back to it, refer back to it a thousand times, so you get it figured out the first time or after a while. But definitely, definitely practice. As dads, it's good to have the kids or whoever fishes with the kids to have them know how to do the knots, or you'll just be tying knots all day. But which is good. <laughs> I just soon do that and have them catch fish. So when my kids go fishing, I'm basically a guide for them because I've caught enough fish for me and I'll have them hit the hole first and catch the fish first. And then when they sit down or tired, then I can fish and try to pick up the scragglers. So that's kind of fun. Um, let's see, let me look at my uh, agenda thing here. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um, there is another one that I'll do um, when you're nymph fishing. Uh, let me look at, I think there's, let me see if there's a, let me see if this will open up here. Let me put it over here. Okay, now when I'll see if I can share this screen. Yeah, right here. And so watch this. I think, uh, let's see, let me share that. And you guys can still hear me. Can you see that fisherman there? I think you can. Okay, so this is nymph fishing. And so this, this uh, indicator uh, right up by the fly line, this indicator is going right there. And there's a special knot that you put on that. And that'll, and I'll show you on this uh, casting. You can see, I'll kind of put the, pointer by it. It's right there. Let's see, let me, oops, my connection's kind of going slow. So see right here, the, let's see, right here, that's the indicator. And so that's what you watch kind of like a dry fly. And so let me show you on that. Okay, so that's so that's the little thing. If you guys uh, look in the chat, can you guys see my address in the chat? The 140 West, 9100 South Paradise. Okay, if you if you guys want, if you if if your mom or dad will send a self, a, so you do an envelope with my address on it, and then put another envelope with your address on it uh, for a return uh, letter, and put uh, you just put three stamps on it. What I'll do is I'll, I've got this whole thing right here and it makes tiny little things like this. I'll give you, I'll send back a yard, like a six feet of it in that envelope and send it back to you. And what you can do with that, you can make probably about 30 or 40 indicators um, with that. So anybody, if I get an email or a letter from you, I open it up and there's another letter in there, sending it back to you with some stamps on it. Uh, I'll, I'll send this a, a yard that you can use for it'll last you a long, long time because you only cut off about two inches every time. And so let's, and uh, this one, and I'll show you, let's see. So you guys can see me all right. Okay, so this one, uh, so you cut off about two inches. That's a, that's a little bit short, but I'll show you. So you take the line and you fold it just in half like that. And you just put your fingers in the middle of it and make just like a half hitch. So you're just doing a half hitch. So you're just kind of going back on itself. And what you do is you just put this in between those two. And so it's just like this. So you got it, let's see, I don't know if you can see very well. Let me put it over here. So you can see and then pull tight like that. So it's, it's kind of like just got that in the middle of it. And then you take just one side and double it on itself. So you go on the inside of it. And I'll do another video on this so it's a little bit better. And then you just put it on the one side, just one side only, and that will stay on there forever like that. So it won't slide or anything. And then what you do uh, in your kit or in your gear, you have just a pair of scissors and you grab this and you just fluff that up. 
So you just take it up and you're making it just so there's lots of air space in there that you can put your floatant on. So you just go, you just keep going right down to the bottom and you just kind of, I don't know, if you just kind of wrap that out a little bit. I guess that's the word for it. You just keep, so there's not a big clump or anything. So it's kind of messy like this. So what you do, um, I just, it's before school. So I just give it a little haircut and make it kind of neat like that. So now it's, now it's a, now it's an indicator like that. And it's really light. Um, there's no weight to it at all. And you put that in, uh, the mucilin on it. Let me see if I've got that. Uh, yeah, you take that, the mucilin, the green mucilin or the red one, get a little bit of paste on your hand and just work it in there. And that thing will float like a cork for probably, I mean, I've used them for uh, four or five weeks and you just kind of reapply that. So that's, that's really good. That, so that's a knot and I'll do an Instagram on that one um, just to do that and set up your uh, uh, nymphing uh, leader. So that will work that way. So any, any questions about that? And if you guys, like I say, I'm going to be doing those on the Instagram so it's not, you don't have to watch this video clear through. You can just watch it for, and it's less than a minute, and you can just get refreshed on it and get a kind of a, an idea. So I'm going to be doing one of those, probably one of those a day. So keep watching those. If you do see it, hit a, um, just let me know that you saw, you know, hit like or whatever, or the button, just so I can see people are catching up to it. And then I can see how many people are going on it, and it's helping people, so. So I think, and then let me look at it. any other questions while I look at my calendar here. So Nick, uh, and I'll tell you, next time we're going to talk about all about flies and kind of the, there are so many flies out there. I think there's, I counted them and there are 3,423,000 and, and more. <laughs> so there are quite a lot of flies and they have a lot of different names. But really, if you have uh, a, a dozen flies, maybe a dozen, half a dozen nymphs, a half a dozen dry flies in kind of different um, uh, different looks and different things to kind of mimic different things, you'll be okay. So, you know, you can, a lot of guys have a bazillion flies, but then the choices are hard. But if you start out with a few that work and then you expand from there, but those few core flies will work really well. Um, any, quest, any questions on the knots and everything about how to set up the line and different stuff like that? Just some practice, though, right? Yeah, lots of practice. And the best uh, good way to start to practice is with your paracord. It's a little bit thick and it doesn't work as well, but it gives you the, you can see it better. If you try to work with like 4X line or something, you can hardly even see it. So it makes the, the practice go a little bit tougher. So yeah, that stuff, even that stuff's pretty good, what he's got in his hand. Anything that you can see. The type of um, the flies that you're talking about, do they just have like, like the rod, like packs, like beginner packs or recommended packs yeah um yeah they probably do a lot of times they they have seasonal ones where you can get some that are kind of more for spring more for summer more for fall um, but normally you would just uh you just go into a store and buy kind of what you want so for example um i would probably go in and buy elk hair caddis um and you guys know what that is i'll grab one out of here real quick so it's called a tent wing. We'll go into a lot more depth on it next time. But so this is called a that's a tent wing. It's kind of like a, a little tent on there. And so this resembles pretty much any caddis. What is that? What else would that look like? A small what hops around and and has a movie uh, that they're the bad guys. Hoppers. Oh, there <laughs> my internet might have went down a little bit. Um, so this resembles a small hopper too. So this could be used in the fall uh, or late summer, but this is a tent wing. And then they have our other flies that the flies go straight up, which is a mayfly. So there's a caddis and a mayfly. And then there's um, other flies that are, are just a tractor. So this one, I'll show you this one. So here's one of my favorite flies. And let's see a better. So this is one of my favorite ones. And look how big and ugly that thing is. So what that is, it's a, 
when it gets in the water, it looks like a sculpin. Do you guys know what a sculpin is? If you look up sculpin on the internet, it's a little flat. It looks like a little tiny catfish about that big, about this big. And fish love them because they eat it and they, I don't know how long it lasts for the fish, but that's like going to McDonald's and getting three Big Macs and two fries and a shake and eating it all <laughs> for fish, okay? Because normally the fish will eat tiny little bugs and they have to eat a thousand of those to get any, you know, in their belly. But this one, they just eat one. So this, this is kind of a fun, so this is a, a, a resembles a fish um, or a streamer. And so that's a lot of fun that way. How so big we go, of a fish would take that one down? What's that? How big of a fish would take that, something that size down? Um, as far as how big fish, like size wise? Yeah. Um, I've had fish probably six inches take this or hit it. Um, and then of course all your big ones. Yeah. I'm on, on the Madison River where I fished, if I was in back of the boat not rowing, I would throw this against the bank miles and just keep doing that. I'd only catch like four or five fish, but every one of them be over 20 inches. Is, you know, a lot of the smaller ones, but a lot of the big ones, because it's kind of a reaction. The fish, and, and you don't do this real slow like this, so the fish look at it. You zip it across their face and it, it, they just have a reaction in their head to go, I want to eat, so I'm going to go grab that. And they'll catch it. You can pull it as fast as you can and they'll still catch it. They're really fast. And they hit it and they hit it hard. It's pretty fun. But just stuff like that. So we'll we'll talk about the flies. Uh, anything else you guys uh, on the next one uh, or anything that's came up that you guys are kind of wondering about as far as fishing? Reading water, that's that's another thing we're going to learn to find where the fish are because if you're if you're fishing where the fish aren't, you're not going to catch any fish, basically. So you got to fish where they are so you have a chance at least. And there's way, ways to read water. It's called, it's kind of like learning a language. There's an app for that. It's called Babbel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think the parents got that. <laughs> but, um, and let's see. Oh, there's somebody. So there's, um, we did the gear, we did some casting, uh, we did some knots. Um, oh, there. Yeah, it's right there. I'll move this forward. There he goes. Um, anything else that you guys uh, talk about on our next one or anything like that? Or any questions about knots? It's kind of boring if we just kind of watch knots because you're like, oh, I want to see fishing or, or something. <laughs> But it's uh, probably one of the important, most important things. You don't want to be on the river trying to fish when you're trying to when you're trying to tie a knot. And you know, if you take ten minutes to tie a knot, you get frustrated and and the fish are jumping and you're going, oh, get this fly on. So then you just fly, you just throw all the flies out there and just say, eat them. I don't care. <laughs> well, maybe not that, especially if you tied them or anything like that. <laughs> Let's see. Anything else you guys uh, have any questions on today? You guys are good. And I put the I put the uh, other uh, Zoom meetings on recorded. Uh, they should be up, I think, tomorrow at noon, it said, or something like that. And so they'll be up. And then also the Instagram thing will be key because they'll be short. You, and it'll say right on it, tip number 25, uh, loop knot or blood knot or 26, blood knot. So then you can, you can search through them, find the one you want, play it, and you're done in a minute. So I think that'll be helpful. On the uh, on the drawings, you're going to have like a final drawing at the end. If they do more than one picture, do they get more than one drawing, or is it just one per attendee, or how does that work? Um, we're doing um, so every time there. If you do a an Instagram pay it post, if you do one of those, you're eligible for that that week. So if you do one this time, uh, I'll do a drawing. But if you do all, if you're on all of them, and then we'll put you in the drawing for the last one. And so I've got a, I've got some, I've got to send the other two. I've just tied the other flies for the first one, and then I've got the other uh, prize for the second one. So yeah, if you just uh, make sure you just post something on that Utah 4-H Shooting Sports USU, and then I'll put you in that drawing. And uh, if you want another thing too, if you do that uh, address thing, you'll get some of this, and that's just a, a, you know, probably by the time you put one or two stamps on the outside and three, you know, you might be, you might be a dollar. Two dollars to get, a, you know, a yard of this, and it doesn't come to me. It goes to the post office, and then you get this. That'll work. Now you can find this in the, the stores, but you have to be the right kind. If it's cotton, it'll sleep. Uh, it'll sink like a cork and won't work. So, this is kind of hard to find. Sometimes I had to go to like five stores to find this particular one. 
How much um, how much postage do they need to put on that self address stamped envelope back? Um, I think I think if they do because it's very light. I think if they do three stamps, you know, and I'll I'll give a you know if I put four yards in here, it might get a little heavy. But and if I need to, I can I'll have them weigh and I'll put another one on it. So if you start out with three and if it needs more, I'll put more on it. No big deal. So but that that's just a that's a good way to get that without having to go buy. And it, the whole thing was only about eight bucks, but not a lot of you are going to use all this. But I, I've given so much of this away, um, I still have a ton. So, but it works good. So, nice, thank you. So that's one thing you could do, and then um, I think that's about it. Any other questions you guys have? Oh, right there, you're good. Arnica, is that your name? That's what it says on your thing. I don't know if he's. Nope, that's not your name. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's about everything. If if nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Am I, is that you guys' cousin DJ or Carter? Carter is DJ's cousin. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. Anything else? I think we'll be good for today. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. We'll see you guys, and we'll we'll catch up. Look at those Instagrams. Um, there'll be a lot coming out. I'm trying to do one a day, so I'm hurrying, but they're, they're fun. It might be two a day, so, but they're good. I think they're good ones to, to learn on. So, hey, we'll talk to you guys later then. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.